Hey, I've been teaching all day. Love it to hear in my voice. Me teaching very enthusiastically all day, so I'm very <laughs> a bit tired now. So let's keep this short. I thought I'd show you a little something. This is something I've been I've been making this summer. Whenever I um, whenever I'm planning learning, I'm often solving problems. These videos are an example of that. They let me cover a bit more, do things a little differently than I do in in class, as it were. And one of the issues that we come across when we're talking about the bones of the skull, and particularly the bones of the orbit and the bones of the nasal cavity, is students struggle to get to grips with where the ethmoid bone is, which I think is quite fair because it's very central. Some people even think there's a left and right ethmoid bone. Some people can't entirely work out where it is inside the skull. Um, and yet it's a very central, very important bone, and it, 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 it forms a number of spaces. So I've been using my 3D printer to prepare something for a specific learning session. Um, and what I've, <laughs> what I've made, I have no idea whether it's any use or not, but I thought I'd try it, is I've made kind of a, a 3D jigsaw puzzle of a cubist model of the bones of the nasal cavity. So I thought I'd take you guys through it uh, and you can see what you think. I'll put the files on Thingiverse uh, at some point in the future and add the link back on this page so you guys can print this out as well. So, we've got a number of bones. Um, this is the maxilla. This is the maxilla. Uh, this is the maxilla. Um, even when we use painted skulls, coloured skulls, students still struggle with the ethmoid bone and also the palatine bones as well. So I wonder if by building these bits together, they'll get an easy understanding of what's what. But this is the maxilla here. Obviously the maxilla here looks quite different to the maxilla here, but it gets the point across. And each bone has got its name embedded into it or embossed into it or whatever that's called. And um, we've got the maxilla and we've got the ethmoid bone. So the ethmoid bone then is a single bone. And we can see um, it's perpendicular plate here. So the nasal cavity is actually split into left and right sides. You, you already know this, right? Um, so we've got the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid bone. We've got the superior and middle nasal conchi, and we've got some extra conchi here. So I'll give the students these bits. We'll give them a skull. We'll give them, I don't know, some images, and we'll see if they can make it up. So I'll, I'll take you through it now. Right, what are we gonna do first? So we've got the maxilla, the ethmoid bone, we've got two palatine bones, two nasal bones, we've got a voma, two inferior nasal conchi, and two lacrimal bones. Different colours, hopefully that'll help. Um, so on the skull, I would say that the ethmoid bone is here, the nasal bones are here, the lacrimal bones are here, the voma is down there, the maxilla is there. Easy, right? Well, right. What about the palatine bones? So the palatine bones are back here. Let's build this. So the maxilla then, let's add. So the, there's a little bit of a peg. And the inferior conchi pop on like that. So that gets the idea across that the inferior nasal conchi are separate bones. Um, we could then actually put the ethmoid bone in. So the ethmoid is a single central bone, right? Um, what about the palatine bones then? Well, the palatine bones, kind of that shape. They pop in here and here. So we've got a palatine bone on either side and, and look that's anterior, that's posterior. So then that is the hard palate formed by the maxilla. So the posterior part of the hard palate is formed by these two palatine bones that are very deep within the skull and difficult to work out where they are. We can see them if we look at the palate, we can see there's a suture there between the palatine bones and the and the hard part of the maxilla. Okay, well, right, well, here's Voma. So if we slide, if we slide Voma in here, now you can see that the, the single 
nasal cavity has been split into two by vomer vomer and the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid bone. Because our bone, our nose has got a fair bit of cartilage in it, so there's also a cartilage separator there, but I'm not doing the cartilages on this model. Right, so I've still got a gap here. So this would be for the lacrimal bones. So the lacrimal bones then, the nasolacrimal duct will drain the tears from the orbit, from the eye, through here into the nasal cavity. And that's what that hole demonstrates. And that does kind of open out in the inferior nasal conchi somewhere. So you've got one of those on either side. And then we've got the nasal bones. These nasal bones then pop on here and here. So the nasal bones then are up here, leaving the openings for the nasal cavity. So that's the activity. You've got the bit. I mean, I guess it's, it's easy and quick for me because I kind of know this stuff when I built it. Um, but the idea is that the students will then put these parts together, paying attention to the names of the bones and applying this conceptual thing to this actual biological thing, although this is a plastic skeleton, not an actual biological skeleton. Um, and then they'll have a good understanding of the ethmoid being this central bone forming the roof of the nasal cavity, these other bits attaching to it, the palatine bones here forming the posterior part of the palate, and so on. All right, we'll try this out on the year two med students and uh, see what they think. They might think it's a load of rubbish, or they might think, yeah, I know where the ethmoid bone is. If they all know where the ethmoid bone is, then I'll be happy, that's all I need. Not saying I've put it in the exam if you're one of my students watching this and wondering if that's a clue to say that I've put it, because it doesn't mean that I have, because, ah, yes, I could add the frontal bone up here. Yes, I could add other bits involved, but adding other things adds to the complexity. The main aim of this is to solve the problem of students not being clear of where the ethmoid bone is. If after using this, they know where the ethmoid bone is, Great, you might argue that the frontal bone adds to that, yes, but it might also make things confusing. You can go from this to this and add more information to it in your own head, about your own head. You can go from here to there, anyway. Right, done. See you next time.